correct render settings will speed up the rendering process and improve the quality of your visualization. Let's start. This is Monica from edac.org. Today I'll explain the render settings. Thanks to it, you can use them in your project. If you want to create photorealistic visualization, make sure that your materials and lighting has the highest quality. Check if your materials have a texture, reflections, and bumps. Thanks to it, you will obtain realistic materials. Also make sure that your lights are created properly. If you want to create your visualization in the fastest way possible, make sure that you are not using too much V-Refer or Displacement. V-Refer and Displacement options make the render slower. Let's go to V-Ray Asset Editor. Here we have settings under the gear icon. And the first thing to do is to choose Render Engine. We can choose CPU, CUDA or RTX. CPU is computer processor, CUDA is graphic card, and RTX is graphic card RTX. Everything depends on your computer. If your computer processor is very good, you should choose CPU. If you have very good graphic cards in your computer, you can choose CUDA. If you have RTX graphic card, you should choose RTX. In my case, I'm rendering on CPU, so I will choose CPU option. Let's check my renders. I created some visualizations using CPU, CUDA, or hybrid. This render was created using graphic card, and the time of the render is more than 17 minutes. In this case, I created render using hybrid, CPU plus GPU. If you want to create hybrid render, just click on CUDA, click on three dots, and select NVIDIA and CPU. Thanks to it, your render will be created using graphic card and computer processor. As we can see, my render with GPU and CPU was created during 10 minutes. And the last render was created with CPU only, and it took only six and a half minutes. As we can compare these three results, the fastest, in my case, is CPU. Let's move on to interactive and progressive render. If you are creating model, not the final render, you need to create a lot of preview renders. To do this, you should turn on interactive or progressive render. Interactive render is lifetime preview, so you can check your render and change your model at the same time. Progressive render is also a fast preview. I use it very often when I'm creating and checking preview renders, so it's good render type in the creation process. If you are in creation process, you don't need the highest quality of the render, they are just preview renders. That's why change the quality of the renders to low plus or to medium quality. Let's say that I want to create a final render. To do this, make sure that your interactive and progressive render is turned off. Now you can create the final render. You need to change the quality. It should be a little higher. The high plus quality is the highest quality possible. It can take a lot of time to create such render with high plus quality, so it's good to decrease the quality to high or medium plus and make sure that you are using denoiser. It's time to move on to denoiser option. Thanks to it, the noise on the visualization will disappear. You can choose V-Ray Denoiser or NVIDIA Denoiser. V-Ray Denoiser is the best option. Then we have camera settings. Here, a very important value is exposure value. At the beginning, it's set to 14. You can change it. If the value is lowered, your scene will be lighter. Mostly, I set it to 11 or 20. It's time to focus on render output. Very important one is save frame. Let's take a look. If the save frame is turned on, we can notice the dark spaces on the left side and on the right side. It means that these parts will not be visible on my visualization. If I turn it off, the render area on the visualization is different than on SketchUp. So make sure that the save frame is always turned on and looks properly. Then we have image width and height. 
if you are creating preview visualization, it's enough to set 800. If you want to create final visualization for websites or to send it via email, you can set it to 90, 20. If you want to print your final render, you should set it to 3000 or even 4000 pixels. Then we have aspect ratio. I set it to 1 to 1. This is a square aspect ratio, but we can change it, for example, to 16 to 9, and our render is horizontal. I have a narrow bathroom, so I will change it to 1 to 1, and the height and the width of the render will be the same. It's good to save image, so every created image will be automatically saved in the folder. Just choose your file path, click on this icon, and save the path. You can choose the file type of your render. Let's move on to Environment tab. Here you can set background, global illumination and reflection. In my case, I haven't changed anything, but if you want to learn more about Environment tab, check out my video on YouTube channel. Here we have Material Override tab. If you want to check the lights in your scene, just turn on Material Override option and set Override color. At the beginning of the visualization process, I often use Material Override option. It's time to move on to the right side of the render settings. Here we have Quality. As we can notice, if I change the quality on the left side, the quality on the right side is also changed. Mostly, I don't change any of these parameters. They are set automatically, depending on the quality on the left side. Then I have global illumination parameter. This is very important because sometimes we can choose brute force as a primary race or irradiance map. There is a difference between them. In brute force, the visualization is more accurate, the lighting works better, and there is no artifacts in the scene. Unfortunately, this type of render takes more time. If I choose irradiance map, the render will be faster, but if your scene is too dark or there is not enough lighting in the interior, you can meet some spots and artifacts. So if you are using irradiance map, make sure that you have a proper lighting in the scene. Let's take a look. This render was created in the brute force and it took 6 minutes 28 seconds. And this render was created using irradiance map and it took 5 minutes 55 second. So as we can see, it's faster. The lighting is set correctly in the scene, so there is no difference in quality in both visualization. As a secondary race, I always choose light cache. I mostly choose brute force as primary race and light cache as secondary race. Now you know all the settings that you can use to create the best visualization. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about SketchUp, check out my website edac.org. See you soon. Bye!